Okay, so in this series, we're going to specifically talk about password hashing and look at some secure examples of hashing passwords so they're suitable to store in a database. So uh, if you're not sure what hashing is or you know, you're know hashing passwords at the moment, perhaps using MD5, um, then this series is for you. So basically applying a secure hashing algorithm to a password stored, it, like storing it into a database, uh, means that if you do it properly, it makes it extremely unlikely that it'll be brute forced if your database is exposed. So if an attacker gains access to your database, say your user's table and has a list of passwords, if they're hashed properly, then you're less likely for them to be brute forced. And, uh, you know, you're adding another layer of security there. So we mentioned MD5, and if you've looked at MD5 before, then it's a good idea to note that it's not a good solution to store, uh, to use this to store passwords in a database. So the function looks like this in, in um, PHP. And if we go ahead and just choose a password, I don't know, we'll choose something maybe more sensible. So we're going to choose a password like this and go ahead and refresh our browser. And you can see that we get this hashed uh, string here. Now you'll note that every time I refresh, the same hash is generated. So if, for example, two users in your database had the password tabby12345, their hashes that are stored in the database would both be this value. Now that's a little bit uh, concerning because if uh, an attacker gains access to a database and has access to one account, if a user's using the same password, they then have access to the other account. And basically using MD5, uh, Nowadays, it's so easy to brute force this. And brute forcing is basically looking up in a preset list of uh, values in a table of values that could be this value. And there are all sorts of complicated ways that you can go ahead and brute force. And we'll be looking at an example of this in a moment. So basically, if you uh, look at an example like this, um, you see we've got a hash generated and uh, later on we're going to go ahead and look at actually brute forcing this. So let's go ahead and look at an example of actually generating hash and then going ahead and comparing this. This is if you're not familiar with uh, comparisons of hashes at all. And it's a basic example and then we'll look at actually brute forcing this value using uh, an online tool. So we know that I've just used the MD5 hash to hash this tabby12345 password and I have this hash from it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to copy this and in my text editor I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a variable called stored password. Now you have to use your imagination and imagine that this value is stored within a database somewhere and I'm a user coming onto the site attempting to sign in. Now once a user enters their username and their password they would supply their password as tabby12345 if that was their password. So what you would then do is you'd create probably an if statement to say, does this password equal this password? Now, because this is a hash, we can't reverse it. There's no way to actually reverse this value and then get the plain text uh, string from it. Uh, the algorithm won't allow for that because it's a hash. It's a one-way hash. So what we need to do is we need to say, instead of something like, does tabby12345 equal stored password, we need to say, well, let's rehash this plain text value that's been provided to us. And because we already know that the MD5 hash will always be the same, uh, we go ahead and get the same value here and the same value here. So we can go ahead and echo something like, you're in. Or if the password isn't correct, we could go ahead and echo something like, Sorry, try again. So let's go ahead and take a look at this and see uh, what it looks like in the browser. So when I refresh, it says you're in. But if maybe I slip up and provide one extra uh, extra letter on there, you'll see that it doesn't work. So that's basically how a login process would work and how hash uh, sort of you compare a hash um, to a stored value. So we know this works, but let's take this hash and go ahead and see if we can brute force this value out of it. Now, if you have signed up to a website, you might think that a, a password like tabby12345 is secure enough, 
but you'll be surprised to see that if we go over to a website like CrackStation, uh, we can go ahead and actually reverse this. So I've pasted in the uh, hash in here, and notice this says non-salted, so we'll, take, we'll, we'll explain salts in just a moment. So let's go ahead and just type in uh, this capture. And I'll go ahead and crack hashes. So what's going to happen now, it's going to, it's going to perform a lookup and brute force this value. And you can see below here, surprisingly, it's actually given us the, the value. So it's gone ahead and looked this up and it's actually brute forced it or cracked it successfully. So now we start to worry and we think to ourselves, well, in this case, if this can be cracked, well, what do we need to do? Well, basically, PHP has within its functionality a function called crypt. So the function looks like this. And this basically lets you securely hash a string, provide a salt, and all a salt is, is it's something that's added to a string to change the value of its hashed output. So just as an example, and this is just as an, as an example, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use MD5 and perhaps provide the value tabby12345 again. Now, if I go ahead and apply a salt, uh, for a, a different salt for every single user, and in this case, all I'm going to provide is PHP's time value. Now, this is not recommended to do at all. This is just an example. Because time changes all the time, uh, sorry, go and have an append this like this. So I'm going to go ahead and append this value that's returned from time onto the end of this. So what then happens is when I refresh, the hash changes every single time it's generated. So this is basically what a hash does. This is just a silly example, a non-secure example, but that's what a hash does. So hashing the password like tabby12345 again and again and again with MD5 will return the same hash. Um, so it's insecure. But the crypt function uh, I mentioned a second ago lets you securely ha hash a password, add a salt, get the returned hash. You can go ahead and store that. However, we're not going to look at the crypt uh, function. We're going to make life even easier for ourselves uh, with it while we still enforce as much security as possible. So we're not going to talk about crypt. We're going to talk about the password hashing API that PHP provides from version 5.5 onwards. So go ahead and check your uh, PHP version. If you're not too sure, just type PHP info into a PHP file. That will give you all the information about your PHP installation. Uh, if you go ahead and check that out, I'm running PHP 5.5.9. So I have the ability to use the password hashing API. If you are unfortunately running something under 5.5, you're not going to have this ability. So go ahead, upgrade to version 5.5 if you haven't already. And in the rest of the series, we're going to look at using this password hashing API to securely hash path passwords that are perfectly acceptable and safe to store in a database.